Okay, well, what we're going to have to do on these rotors, because if you look at the studs, the studs have a bit of a shoulder on them that used to take up the space of the brake drum. This is probably not quite as thick as the brake drum, so what we need to do is... Get our brake pattern that I can't see that right there. You got a Sharpie? What we're going to have to do is, I know you can't see it in there, but this rotor is sitting just a little ways up off the hub so we can't get the brakes adjusted and shimmed right. Uh, any one of these kits is, there's never really a direct bolt on anything. You always got to think a little bit and, 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 and adapt. There's a hub centric <coughs> ring in here. This, this keeps our rotor right in the center where we want it. I lost it again. Okay, and that, that, that fits in there pretty good. It could come through a little bit more, but that's why we're going to drill these holes. You can see they've got a bit of a bevel here, but it's not quite enough to match that. And can we replace all the studs? Yeah, but do we know which studs to get? No. Nope. Well, we'll, we'll tell you. No. Nope. So we're just going to alter this just a little bit so it fits on there, and then we'll be able to continue on. So, it's like I said, nothing, nothing is a direct bolt-on. It, it just doesn't ever seem to work out that way. And that's, that's one of the things that you've got to be able to put up with is stuff changes, and, and you know, you've got to take a run at it and, and make, it, make stuff work and, and just think about what's, what's got to be done to make it work. And I mean, just just drill it out just a little bit bigger and uh, we should be good. So that's it, we'll be back. What's up, y'all? We're gonna show you a little bit on uh, what it takes to put the disc brake set up on here, the wheel wood set up. But uh, of course you gotta take your wheel off. Once you take it off, you slide your drum off. Then you just uh, pop your springs loose, take these clips out, put, take your shoes off. And then you're gonna go in here in this hole right here and zip off these nuts. Little nuts on there. I already got them off. And after you do that, you pop your axle out. Slide it on out of here. And there's a brake line going to this uh, wheel cylinder here. I'm going to take it loose, which Austin already took it loose from earlier. Uh, it was seized up in there, so we got to relocate the brake lines anyways. So further back here somewhere, that's where the caliper's going to be sitting. So it's alright that it broke. You might have to put new ones on anyhow. But uh get this uh this old mess out the way. You ain't gonna use none of that. And uh take your rag, clean all that out. Make sure you ain't got no metal shavings and old bearing material in there. And uh one of the main things that we ran into on this is uh you gotta swap this bearing out. See it right here, else? Mm -hmm. uh, so this bearing here is a press-on bearing with a flange built into the bearing. You cannot use those with this uh, caliper setup. So what you got to do is order a part number MO140, and that's going to be the floating style bearing, uh, like this. Hmm. So the wheelwood kit comes with a new flange. It's nothing like this. And uh, so what you're going to need is these two pieces here. You got your bearing, you got this C clip, and an O ring. And how that's going to go on is something uh, just like that. But first, we gotta cut this old one off. I'll just take the cutoff wheel, slice it in half, 
hit it with the air hammer, it'll fall right off. And then we'll press the new one on. And uh, it's not really a press on, they call it a floating bearing. Uh, but you still gotta tap it on a little bit with a, with a little ball peen hammer or something. But I'll go ahead and cut this off and check back in my job here in a few minutes and uh, let you know progress. There is another thing that we ran into with the uh, drum, uh, with the rotor. Hold on over here and I'll show you. Let's see your camera right here. Uh, like Jim said a second ago, you see these little these little bubbles here on the end of the studs where they press into the axle. Those are getting in the way. So uh, I had to drill these holes out just a hair to get them things to fit good so it fit flush against the axle. What I was the problem I was having was once I put my caliper on here, I couldn't get the correct uh, adjustment in my pad. And it was because the rotor wasn't sitting all the way flush against the axle. And uh, so yeah, that's that. So the kit comes with this little aluminum ring right here. Show them this ring off. You see that ring in there? So it, it, it sits in there at the center of this, uh, uh, this, this uh, caliper, this rotor. Center of the rotor. The old drum used to be centered by those little bubbles on the stud. Or by the stud. So. That's another big difference. But other than that, everything should bolt together except for drilling those out and cutting that bearing off. And doing all that stuff. But uh, yeah, you can film me if you want to. I'm going to cut that out, throw some sparks around real quick. Got your safety glasses on. Safety. They clean them things up. Put a new wheel on here. You ready for your favorite part? The sparklers. Turn the camera around, look at yourself. I think the world deserves to see you.
Alright, so, uh, got this bearing cut off of here. Just slice through it. Hit it with the air hammer. And it'll come loose. Slide all this off of there. We'll take this over to parts washer, clean it up real good, get all this old grease off of it while we're handling it. Then we'll get the new bearing and everything assembled. But, uh, I ain't gonna bore you. I ain't gonna bore you with all the parts washing stuff. It's just cleaning is all. Everybody knows how to clean, right? Except for Austin. All right, y'all. So we got the uh, the new Baron uh, pressed on here, and uh, we got the e-brake assembly installed. So after you press your bearing on, you got a little uh, retaining ring right here. You can take it off. Slide this uh, cap uh, e-brake bracket. Slide it down over it. Put the ring back on. And so there's a groove on the back side that that cal that that retaining ring sits in. Then you slide your axle in. Just like it. Alright, so once that's on, you got a retaining ring. I mean, uh, so the, the metal clip on the back side of here is what pretty much keeps your bearing from floating out. And then your little You got this little ring right here that uh, presses on over the bearing, which sits back in the back and keeps it from moving in. And uh, see this little recess here? It's that little lip. So that ring on that bearing, that retaining ring on that bearing, rides on this too. So it also keeps it from moving. See, you didn't have any of this. You didn't have any of this on the factory bearing. It was just all one assembly that was pressed onto this axle. So this is one of the major changes here. So you get this done, you, you pretty much got it. The rest is just drilling some holes and running some brake line. It's a little tricky to get it up in here. I used a magnet last time, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Alright, so after you get that uh, the outside retainer in, you look through here, you, your factory uh, bolts that go through the flange, you're going to go ahead and put them back on, and then you mount your caliper, I mean, drill your holes for your, for your rotor, put it on, then mount your caliper, get your shims right on the uh, interruption, I always silk. You can go ahead and cut. What's up, y'all? All right, we're back. I got the uh, hose drilled out on the uh, rotor here. Got it mounted, and it's sitting flush. 
slit, sitting right flush against the, uh, the axle there. Next, we're going to put the caliper on. I'm going to show you how to shim it. So you got your uh, caliper bracket on the back side here, built into the uh, built into the e-breaker assembly here. On the front, I had to put the caliper bracket on. On this one, it's made onto it, so you don't have to do it on the rear. But uh, pretty much what you want to start out with. The directions say to start out with two shims. On the other side, I actually had to start with no shims. That's when I found out the problem with the rotor not sitting flush against the, the axle there. So I'm gonna start with no shims this time. Let me grab my ring. So you wanna just uh, get it bolted up here and uh, snug it up pretty tight and um, snug it up pretty tight then you wanna on the front there's a carter key that goes carter pin that goes through holds the uh, holds the uh, pads in on this and it has a little little spring mechanism that holds it in but you take out this uh, this is screw right here this bolt don't lose that Austin then look right here. And on these rear blades, you got this clip here. You pull this clip back and slide it back. Then you're gonna pull it back again, slide it off. Try not to poke your buddy in the eye. Might hurt. So these are the little shims that they send you with the kit. Let me grab some brake pads. These pads slide in from the back, just like that. Put the camera right here. See that? Can you see it? You can't even see it. Cut that light on. So you got a gap here. No gap here. So you want those to be equal. That's what you want. Your shim. So you just add a shim, check it. You gotta take it off, add a shim. Put it back on, check it. If it's not right, take it off, add another shim. Put it back on, check it. Once you get that all that that centered up. Uh, the directions say to remove these bolts one at a time, apply red Loctite, torque to uh, 40 foot-pounds, I believe, or 45, something like that. I'll go back and look. And then your caliper is mounted and you're done. The only thing left is to uh, run your new brake line to the caliper. See back here? I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a sticker covering the hole. But we got some fittings in the kit. Let's Screw your fittings in there, seal them up, screw them in, and then we're going to run a new brake line, mount it somehow to the axle tube, and then we're going to use the brake lines that they sent us to connect back to it. I probably could just use a hard line all the way to the caliper on the back because the caliper rides up and down with the axle, so there's really no need for a brake hose. But uh, that's where we're at, and I'll get this shimmed up with the provided shims, and uh, 
get back with you guys on the e-brake. And uh, that's it for now.